That'll definitely crash Zoom. All right, so I got to make sure I'm screen sharing then. So, and this is where things get dicey. All right, so you should see my screen now. Can you give me a thumbs up if you do? All right, sweet. Cool. So, um, like we talked about yesterday, we are talking about discriminants and then completing the square. We're mainly talking about completing the square today. So does anyone have any remaining questions about discriminants? Because I think most of us did that practice work. No remaining questions about discriminants. Great. So then we started talking about complete the square. Can anyone summarize? And you might not be able to because we just started it like yesterday. Can anyone summarize what the complete the square method is and like why we do it? Yeah. Uh, not necessarily a missing constant. That's part of it. Like we end up messing with the constant. But like, so if we look at the equation on the right here, x squared plus 4x minus 21, that has a constant, but we're still going to have to use complete the square for it. Does x squared plus 4x minus 21 look easy to solve? Like easy to factor or solve in, in some other way? No, not like gut instinct, right? Because we need numbers that add to 4 and multiply to 21. Well, first off, one of them would have to be odd. If we're going to multiply to negative 21, one of them has to be negative. Uh, I'm thinking like 7 and 3, right? So... We might, like, this might be able to be solved easily, actually. 7 and 3 don't sound bad, but okay, so what about this one, though? x squared plus 4x equals 0. This almost looks like a difference of squares, but it's not, because it's not missing the b term. It's missing the c term. We said, like, missing, right? So let, let's write down x squared plus 4x plus 0, and then maybe we can kind of remember why we were doing complete the square by by running through one of these. Not plus. Sorry, equals. Now, I will for a moment, for anyone thinking this, talk about, yes, we could factor what out of this equation? An x. Right, so we could write that as x times x plus 4 equals 0. And we'll, co we'll come back to this. But let's just go ahead and look at if... Sorry, this is not a not equals. This is an equal sign. I just messed it up. I accidentally wrote plus, and then I tried to write over top of it. I really need some white out. So if we mess with this in the complete the square form, which is why I wanted to start with this problem today, it is missing, quote-unquote, and Kalen said, it's missing its constant, and it is quadratic because it's equal to zero. Now, we might mess up it being quadratic, but we can still work with the equation. We just kind of play with it till, till it's easier. Never going to say these things are easy, but I will say we try to make them easier. So... A perfect square equation is something involving a binomial square. How did we say yesterday we can think about what goes in here? We, I thought we wrote it down somewhere, but maybe not. Half of B. So if you want to make a note somewhere for perfect square equations, so to make... Right, to make perfect square equations, we're going to have x plus half of b squared. So half of b is 2, because if we wrote this out to FOIL, right, I want to make sure that we look at the y, not just talk about the what, but look at the y. So x plus 2 squared, the outer and the inner would make my 4x. Now what we then have to fix comes from the last, well, and by the way, the first, right? We know the first would be x squared. 
but the last 2 times 2 gives us a constant value of 2 times 2. You guys are my best math class. Thank you very much. 4. So if we need a 4 over here to make that perfect square, we will also have to add 4 on the right side. So this half b then multiplies by itself to become c, right? So we're saying c, and we wrote this down yesterday because I have it in my notes, c in the making a perfect square equation, c is 1 half b squared. And we either add that to both sides or modify the existing constant to be what we want. So now that we've added 4 on both sides, we actually have this perfect square equation equal to 4, because now this equation has the 4 in it on the left side. So guys, the reason I'm kind of working so slow and repeating myself is this is always complicated. When I teach this, like most of the time students have some issues with it. So we had what was written in black, we added what's written in red, but this, I should have written this in a different color, this involves the black and the red. Okay, so to make this happen, we had to do this. And that's why when I write it in order, now the left side is x plus 2 squared. Because we made it happen. We added the 4. Are there any questions on why my equation now is x plus 2 squared equals 4? This is what teachers call wait time. And then yesterday we said this tells us what? What does this form of this equation tell us? I was right at the end of class. What form is this? Vertex form! So this tells us the vertex is negative 2, positive 4. Remember, because it's the opposite of our h, opposite of h, plus k. Wait, wait, wait. Perfect opportunity to tell me I messed up. Messed up. Messed what did I mess up? <laughs> um, I have to bring the 4 to the other side, so be careful. I wrote this like this because I know I can always put more stuff in here, right? I can always write more. It's hard to write less. If I subtract 4 from both sides, now we're in vertex form. Remember, vertex form only works if it's set quadratic, so if it's set equal to 0. So my vertex is negative 2, negative 4. So be careful. My vertex is negative 2, negative 4. So now, I'm confused though. We had said we could rewrite x squared plus 4x to this. What does this tell us? What can we figure out? Because so we factored that, right? What do we figure out from factored forms? What does the factored form Avi? And what what do you mean what x is equal to? Say that in a different way. Oh, you just said the word we're looking for. No, before that. Zero. And by doing that, we find, well, yeah, we also call it that. You're, you're right, but what x is when, when y is equal to 0. So x, dude, remember, x can be anything. I could plug in whatever x I want. You just saying what x is, we need more words, right? So you're right, what x is when y is zero. We could find our zeros from here. So 
Remember, all of this is representing a function that is representing something that's happening. So if we look at... Now wait. Is there a way to utilize this? So we, we took it to perfect square form, right? Here's our perfect square form. Can I, please write this with me, can I do this? And I write it a bit nicer than whatever happened here. But we can square root both sides, right? If we square root both sides, x plus 2 equals what? Ooh, positive or negative 2. So we could actually think about two different options. I can think about x plus 2 equals 2 and x plus 2 equals negative 2. Subtract 2 from both sides, x equals 0. Subtract 2 from both sides, x equals negative 4. So from our perfect square form that we created, we can actually just quickly derive our zeros, which we know agrees with if we had come up here to our factored form. Because guys, remember, we're just playing with math. We can solve this using different routes. We're just practicing a route that we don't understand yet by comparing to a route that we do understand. So this equation isn't that bad. We're just learning perfect, or we're learning complete the square using a nicer equation, right? Now, when I left, or when you guys left me, not when I left you, when you guys left me yesterday, I was saying, guys, this is a physical thing. Like, it actually happens. X squared, right? Plus 4X. I do not have enough X's. Funny story, I don't have that many X's. I only dated a few people through my life. If whoever, like, chuckled was thinking the same thing as me. So, guys, if we set this up, if we try to physically build X squared plus 4X, there is no way for me to make a perfect square using just these tiles, but I could make a perfect rectangle, right? And if I make a perfect rectangle, that perfect rectangle is x by x plus 4, which is our factored form. But if we wanted to make a square out of it, if we wanted to make a square, literally make a square, we need the missing constant pieces, which is why we choose to add in four one tiles in this area. So without me digging out three more one tiles, are you starting to like visually see what I'm talking about? Yeah. This is why we split the B value because the X squared is always gonna take a corner and we split the B value so that we are creating a square as we go out length and go out width. Let's try um, well, okay, so we already talked about x squared plus 4x minus 21. We know that we can do that factored form. Solve that in perfect square form. So this second, the one on the right, solve that in perfect square form. You can also solve it factored form, but we want to practice our perfect square, or our completing the square form. It's really called complete the square. It's not actually called perfect square. I just accidentally call it that a lot. Excuse me, because we're trying to create perfect square equations.
Tamar, do you want to write it down while I say it for you? So guys, if I try to build this, x squared plus 4x plus negative 21, what, uh, um, <laughs> I don't like this. <laughs> so, it, no, right? Or I don't, I mean, these are non-commensurate. If you don't remember that nice $5 word, non-commensurate means there's no way that these go together. So, like, there's no amount of X's that can line up with an amount of 1's perfectly. So, I can't do anything like that. I, I have to line them up on the countable spaces. Wow, this is frustrating. Let's get rid of those for a minute. Remember the two ways that we can solve this that we talked about yesterday. We can momentarily ignore the constant and just figure out what we need to make it, or we can modify it. They're really the same. It all just depends on your thought process. Like those two methods are really the same. Oh, by the way, I forgot to show this on the last one that we solved. But here's your, uh, put it in a graphing calculator, defense of there's our vertex and there are zeros from the x squared plus 4x equals zero equation. So now we're doing this, but also with a minus 21 out here. And I'm not going to show that yet. Ah. <laughs> Piece of candy to whoever tells me the vertex first. I do have candy to use up, so I will actually, like, if you want, I, I will give away candy. It's not, you're close. <clears throat> So if we think about creating this into a perfect square form, shoot, I don't even want this parenthesis yet. I want it like down here. Half of B is two. <clears throat> so we're doing that. But th this doesn't work because, so guys, check it. I left a big old space here to then say if, x plus 2 squared is what I have. What I have is x squared plus 4x plus 4. To get there, we need to... Well, what needs to happen to the negative 21 to get plus 4? We need to add 25 to both sides. So then my left side does become this trinomial but my right side is 25, and then I could write it as x plus 2 squared equals 25. So, over my, however many years I've been solving complete the square, because I learned it back in high school, right, my advice is leave a gap on your page, then write what we want, then above it write what that would give us, and then above that, write what we have to do to make that happen. But then we're not in vertex form. To get to vertex form, we need to... Yeah, so Kaylin, not only was it not a 21... Ooh. So remember, this plus 4, yeah. I, I like that you just said that so that we can talk about it. This plus 4 comes from this. Yeah. So remember, that 4 exists inside of this perfect square. And the 25 is just here because we added 25 to both sides. 
So now if I subtract 25 from both sides to put this into vertex form, I'm going to just go ahead and write in green because it's what I have. I am out of time in four minutes. Four minutes. So, yeah, it's negative two. Negative 25 is our vertex. So please note your vertex is negative 2, negative 25. And then if we go back to here, right, this is why I went ahead and wrote that in blue, or blue versus green. If we use the x plus 2 squared, which guys, you can really figure out your zeros before you figure out your vertex if you want. We can square root. Square root. So x plus 2, I don't know why I put it in parentheses, equals a positive 5. Or x plus 2 equals a negative 5. We solve and we get x's, oh sorry you can't see, get x's 3 or x's negative 7. And if we check it with Desmos, kablam! Oh, it did away with my points when I drug the 3, negative 7, and a vertex of negative 2, negative 25. Any questions on the completing the square method? Because then we get to problems like this that wouldn't just factor out nice and easy. Because think about things that would add to 10 and multiply to 6, oh wait, yeah, 8 and 2, okay, so this one we could still solve, but in con they will get much harder, these, this type of problem was only up through the first complete the square assignment, after that they turn into equations you could not solve otherwise, so right now, it says rewrite using complete the square, but you wouldn't have to use complete the square to solve it, right? The reason we do complete the square is there are equations that we cannot solve unless we complete the square. Does that make sense? Right now, you, like, it maybe doesn't matter as much because I've given you equations that, oh yeah, 8 and 2 would work. And that's why I kind of say things like jokingly sometimes of like, oh yeah, this one's really tough because 10 and 16. No, it's not. I want you guys to in your head think like, no, it's not, Mr. Hudson. It's 8 and 2. Like, always be on, right? Don't just believe what I say because when I'm teaching, I'm kind of like acting. Um, so after that, and I, I didn't plan on us getting any further today. So perfect timing. On Monday or Tuesday or whatever colors, I can't keep track of things. We will continue and go over the more difficult complete the square problems, as well as I assigned you guys all of your work for next week. You can thank your classmates who asked me to go ahead and do that. Um, but there are videos included in your assigned work, so please watch those so you come to class already knowing some of the information, and then you can ask about what still doesn't quite make sense. Are there any general questions? General questions? Anyone want to watch how I met your mother? It's probably not as funny because you guys are young and well, you haven't dated since old grade. So that's the joke on that TV show. Is anytime somebody says something like, does anyone have any general concerns? People are like, general concerns? It's, it's just a joke from a TV show. All right. To my student on Zoom, because I'm still recording my YouTube video, have a great weekend. Um, thank you for joining. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. And to all of you people live in class, you're amazing. Thank you for coming.